right, now we're going to look at something kind of cool. This vector field that we've talked a little about before, I, I told you that it was nifty and we'd be coming back to it again. So this is the one minus y over x squared plus y squared. Uh, and then the other component is x over x squared plus y squared. And if you're wondering, by the way, where this comes from, this actually, uh, these are the components of 1 over z, where z is the complex number x plus i y. So <clears throat> that's not important for this class, but just in case you're wondering, like, hey, how did somebody come up with this crackpot thing in the first place? So we're going to show that this f is exact, but not conservative on its domains. So to check exactness here, we have to check that um, uh, dq dx is equal to dp dy, right? So here, this is going to be our p, and this is going to be our q. So if we do um, dp dy, I've got minus y over x squared plus y squared, and I'm going to take its derivative with respect to y. So I'll need to use product rule. And we've got our little whatever, ho de high minus high de ho over ho ho, or whatever you want to do. Um, so we've got um, ho de high. Minus high d ho all over ho ho. Okay. Um, so there's there we have the one and the top simplifies. Let's see. The um, <clears throat> I've got uh, a minus y squared plus two y squared. So I end up with y squared minus x squared and that business on the bottom. And then if I do dq dx, I, I get the same thing. Um, well, you knew that because I told you it was going to work out, but OK, so let's do it. So we've got um, d dx of x over x squared plus y squared. Um, so let's see. So we've got x squared plus y squared times the derivative of the top, which is 1 minus um, the derivative of the, uh, sorry, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, because we're differentiating now with respect to um, dx. And then on the bottom, we have the whole thing squared. Okay, and so then you can see that um, we're going to get uh, an x squared here minus 2x squared here, so we end up with y squared minus that leftover x squared, which agrees with what we had before. All right, so it is exact. Um, now to see that it's not conservative, um, we will look at the closed integral around a loop. Because we know that this is 0 whenever f is conservative by that theorem. Now to prove directly that there cannot exist uh, a potential for f, so that f is the gradient of that potential, that would be hard. So we're going to appeal to the theorem instead. So um, if we consider c of t just to be the uh, usual unit circle, so we'll do cosine t sine t as t goes from whoops, uh, 0 to 2 pi, then let's see the uh, integral of f dot dc over this is going to be, and let's see, so the x squared plus y squared is going to be cosine squared plus sine squared, so the denominator is just going to end up equaling 1. So that's awfully pretty. Um, <clears throat> let's see, so we've got 0 to 2 pi f of c of t looks like uh, minus sine t over cosine squared plus uh, sine squared. And then we've got uh, cosine t over cosine squared plus sine squared. And then this is dotted with uh, the derivative of c. So this is going to be um, minus sine t comma uh, derivative of sine is cosine t dt. And so we end up with, let's see, the integral from 0 to 2 pi 
sine squared plus cosine squared dt and then again by Pythagoras this is all equal to just 1 so we end up with 2 pi and so 2 pi you may have noticed is not equal to 0 so f cannot be conservative by the path independence theorem Okay, so now the crazy thing is, in fact, even more is true. So if C is any simple closed curve, around uh, the origin, then this path integral is going to be 2 pi. The only thing it sees is the origin. So, so here's, here's an example for, for why this works. So uh, let's suppose we take uh, a path that looks like this. Uh, let's see, we'll go blue. So we'll go around, blah, 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 around like this, OK? So this is like, I don't know, octopus head or something will be, no, I don't even know what that looks like. Um, that's gonna be our C, right? So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to look at a circle inside. And so this will be, we'll call this C epsilon. And <clears throat> um, so let's see now. Uh, if we look at the integral around C, this is the same thing as the, and this is all the integral of f dot dc, but I'm just not going to write it each time. This is the same as C minus C epsilon plus C epsilon, uh, right? Because I can always add and subtract something and it doesn't change the value. But then I can rewrite this as uh, the integral C minus C epsilon plus the integral C epsilon. Okay, and so what this one this says is uh, we go around the path C, then backward. Remember, it's reverses orientation if you have minus the path. Uh, so then we go backward around C epsilon, and so this is what we're going to do. We're going to start by going around C. Da, 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 da. And then here, we're going to duck down the axis. And then we're going to go backwards around C. And then we're going to go back along the axis right here. Now, what happens is these parts right here, this corresponds to going forward and backward down the line, same line segment. And so these cancel. If we call this little path like alpha, what I'm saying is that the, the integral going down alpha and then going back across alpha the other way is the same as this one, which we know from previous experience with calculus is this one. So it's zero. Okay, so how does this work? Well, <clears throat> All I need, to, so I can now do two, uh, there's now two steps left of this, this argument here. So we're going to show that the integral over C minus C epsilon of F dot DC is equal to zero. And that the integral over the little mini circle is equal to 2 pi. OK, and then now let's see. If we look at uh, the first one, for this here, um, we have that the domain is simply connected. 
So let's let's see what is going on here that's causing all the issues. It's that there's this hole in the domain right here in the center, right? The domain of this vector field does not include the origin. So now if I look at the purple path, maybe I'll redraw uh, a sketch of the purple path uh, just down below here. Oh God, why did I make it so complicated? Okay, so it really it now looks like the, the head of a skull or something. Okay, so we go over and then down and then around and then the wibbly wobbly woo and then up here oh dang it and i was doing so well okay try it again don't slow down this time okay wobble 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 bump okay up back around and out okay now this domain has no holes in it because we're looking at this the only hole that uh, would cause us a problem is the one at the origin, but the origin is not inside this region. It is right here. And that is not inside the green zone. So we have that um, F is um, exact on this simply connected um, domain so it's conservative by the path independence theorem okay then that means that um, the integral over this uh, the boundary of this thing is going to be zero okay and so it only remains to check that the integral around the uh, inner region vanishes. But you know what? That's actually easy. So um, we just go back to the original setup that we had over here and say, okay, let's multiply by epsilon so that we're going around a path of um, radius epsilon. So then there's going to be um, an epsilon in front of each of these guys and an epsilon in front of each of these guys and uh, let's see what else happens so we have um, epsilon squared over here and oh we've got um, also epsilon squareds in each of the denominators down here and so this is actually epsilon squared over epsilon squared, and they cancel. Okay, so we get the same thing. So now the crazy thing about this means that this vector field just acts like a hole detector, right? So in other words, let's suppose, you know, here we've got this hole at the origin, and we can take the integral of this vector field around this curve. It's going to be zero. This curve, 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 it's going to be two pi. As soon as it hits that hole, it's going to be two pi. This one, it's going to be two pi. This one, it's going to be two pi. And actually this extends. Now, it takes a bit of fiddling to get it right um, uh, in terms of the proof, but it doesn't even need to be a simple closed curve. And so, let's see. Um, what if we go like that? What do you think the integral is going to be? It's going to be 2 pi times 2. What if we go uh, around the opposite way and so I went like one, two, three times around it. It's going to be minus three times two pi. So in fact, what we get is that one over two pi times the integral of C f dot dc is going to be the number of counterclockwise times that it loops around the origin. 
And this, this is actually, this is a, a deep result, and it's the jumping off point for a class called topology. And you would cover this stuff uh, at Cal Poly in Math um, 540 or 550. <coughs> um, because it gets tricky, because there are holes, some holes you can't catch with a loop. For example, if you imagine um, a, a piece of Swiss cheese inside there are those empty pockets and you can't catch a loop like that with or sorry you can't catch a hole like that with a a, a loop you, you need something a little bit better so anyway that's enough this, this is this is going outside the the scope of this class i just wanted to sort of show you what direction this goes in